Hello and welcome back. We are live from Detroit for episode 24 of the podcast. Yes, I am Earl and I'm holding in a cough right now. <laughs> and I am Jen <laughs> and my favorite thing to start a show off is hand him my pen. Yes, yes. And, and, and we are here, if you are here as well, uh, to learn about cannabis yep. and cannabis products so that we can have a well-balanced understanding of the same. You are in the right spot. You are. Uh, so we take a new topic every week from current events, business, science, a little bit of politics, a, little a bit lot politics. of history. Good history, good history. We get into uh, a little bit do-yourself, which yep. is today. It is. Um, so we kind of, and if you have a topic that you want us to cover, by all means, shoot us a message on Facebook or Instagram, um, yep. or go to our website, uh, CannabisTherapyNetwork.org, Cannabis Therapy Network dot O-R-G. I'm so proud of you for getting it right. Yes, I, I was consciously <laughs> trying to be like, I'm not getting this one wrong this time. <laughs> and then also one Um So please like and share us. Also, this is how we grow. Yes, please share us on Facebook, share us on Instagram, do all that jazz. Uh, help us out here. We help you, help us. And each week, again, give, give us a topic. We'll take yep. it, we'll study it, we'll come back, we'll discuss it, and hopefully we all will learn something new. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Let's cool. get right into our Nug News. Yes. Okay, so mine was pretty cool. I found a cannabis delivery service for medical marijuana in Michigan. That's cool, Michigan. Jane, but you can't start because we got to talk about the sponsor. <gasps> ah, ah she's like, I was just you so excited. On, she was I was like, so <laughs> excited about my article. I forgot about our sponsor of Nug News, which is Tiggity App. Tiggity App, which is a Tiggity App, which is a first. <laughs> no, the cough came. <laughs> it's a delayed trying, cough on that one. I was trying one. to hold that in. You did uh, good. Tiggity is the first app that will allow you to journal how cannabis products and cannabis itself affects you. Yep. Um, so you can be able to find products on the same basis. If you're looking for a product on how to be calm, uh, if you're looking for a product for sleep, um, Cannabis Therapy Journal, um, brought to you by Tiggity, is there for you. Yep, so you can go and pre-sign up on TiggityApp.com. Yes, and be one of the first ones to get the sneak peek to the app. Yeah, okay, now I'm doing my news. <laughs> Um, so my article is about they have allowed medical marijuana to be delivered in Michigan. There are three companies that do it. One in Portage, Michigan, which is, I used to work in Portage, Michigan. It's on the west side of the state. Never knew that. Yeah. Fun fact. Never it's heard right of... next door to Kalamazoo. Wow. I never heard of Portage, Michigan. Yeah. And I never knew you worked in Portage, Michigan. But okay. Okay. I did. Okay. Now, you, now you know. Yes. And then there's two in Metro Detroit, and I don't remember the cities. How do you feel about that? I think it's awesome. I think that's so cool. Yeah. You just deliver it. I mean, there's a lot of regulations that go with it and everything, yeah, but yeah. it opens up a whole new market for people yeah. to get jobs and everything like that. I think it's great. Yeah, and people that also get access to it as well, yeah, especially like if, who if don't you're drive. in a UP or something and, yeah. and there's not a lot of shops up there. So there's some shops that's maybe in a larger market where it's kind of saturated, you can still scale by going outside of that area. and it's cool because like if you're in a location that doesn't have dispensaries or they don't allow them um you're actually still able to drive through because it's still yeah, legal true. yeah true true all right well i mean we can only touch on your one article so much it's like have... a four sentence article too uh, is it really i have like 20 articles to get through here 11 11 11 you count it who's keeping records um all right so first one <laughs> State police prepared to crack down on Michigan's marijuana black market. I'm going to do my best to um, not spend so much time on so many of them, but this one I would like to pause on. Okay. So this is a really, really interesting article. It's brought to you by Detroit News. Uh, definitely read it. But it's pretty much talking about now there's a 40-person unit, um, as far as detectives, and there's also other people part of that, that's going to start going after um, unlicensed activity. And what really just makes you just go, hmm, is that, I mean, what does legalization look like? Right. Like, like why is this <laughs> your main concern? Why do you have 40 people dedicated to this? And, and what makes it kind of like sad and kind of like what is within the, even within the community, there is like this divide and this strife. And it's like, now you have the people that, granted, you understood it. It's going to be an uphill battle to get a license. Right. You knew it was going to cost some money. But now you put that investment in, and now you're trying to like shed light on the black market and be like, well, I'm going to eliminate them. I mean, that's that's how we got in this. That's how we got where we are today. Yes, that type of uh, 
doggy dog mentality, win lose mentality. It's a win win situation. Everybody has can be able to get their cake and eat it too within this right. this whole scenario. So it's it's really kind of just. Sit. And if the black market is taking business away from you, you shouldn't be in business. No, you should not. You you're should not, not doing a good job. Yeah, you should have. You that's have what good, you're worried about. Good product, good service, very good atmosphere, fair prices, and you will be able to succeed in this business. If you don't have any of that, don't 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 try to create a whole nother war now. Right. To your advantage, was it about the people or was it about profit? Because if it's about the people, then it doesn't matter. All this license exactly. stuff, like that's 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 side dishes. The main dish is the freedom of people, the people who are disproportionately incarcerated mm -hmm. because of this, or the the people whose families have been destroyed, whose kids had to grow up without their father because he had a joint. I mean, that is that is the point of legalization, not you getting some license so that you can make millions right. and then try to still keep other people in jail. No, get that out of here. That's some bam stuff. Bam. Can I? Go ahead. There's rams and there's bams. I was really trying to come back because <laughs> bum ass mofos. There we go. Bum go. ass mofos. That's a bam. Rams are the real so ass mofos. Bad. There we go. I'll change that it up. Good. There we go. Cool. cool. All right. So that's it uh, for that. Uh, moving on to Texas Senate unanimously approves hemp legalization bill, um, which is kind of big because Texas could be a major player when it comes to hemp. I mean, you can grow out there year round, right? Yes. And a, lot of, huge. and a lot of farmers are, are facing some really difficult times. Mm -hmm. And they're looking for hemp to help be a whole another economic stimulus. For which them, is awesome. Which is great. So Texas, keep an eye on Texas. Um, horses should lay off CBD. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I put this in here because really we're talking about horses. <laughs> we're talking about horses. They're talking about how horses should not take CBD because okay. it, it could uh, it affects be a, their performance. Yes, yeah, so it could be like an unfair advantage or something. What? Like, come on, man, man. Social consumption pilot for marijuana would make a lot of sense, says governor. Um, I put this in here. If we read it, I believe social consumption is the next wave. Okay. Um, that's up and coming in the cannabis industry. The next big wave, um, and I think is a key component to. Us really, the whole point of this whole movement was to make cannabis normal again. Right, right. And the whole social consumption point of it um, makes it more normal. Mm -hmm. It doesn't like you gotta be some loner in a house just smoking and you can't come out or something like that. Right. You should be able to do it with just like you're having a cocktail with friends. Exactly. Um, you should be able to smoke a joint with friends. Um, so that public consum or social consumption is gonna be coming, uh, which brings us to craftcannabisclub.org. It is. Yes, craftcannabisclub.org is a social consumption club that's up and coming. Go to the website and you can actually be one of the first to uh, be in the membership pool. All right. Study finds disproportionate number of black people arrested in D.C. Um, this is not nothing new, but yet um, it's shedding more light on the scenario. If you watch this news, I say it out pretty much right. almost every single time, and I will continually say it, that even though that cannabis becomes legalized, that is not the end of it. Right. Because there's still, there's still, it's just like there's still these little technical technicalities that people can get caught on. And it's still, the people who are getting caught in those technicalities is still disproportionately poor people and black people. Right, right. So, so this is still, a still is still an issue and it will remain an issue until we do something about it. Like literally, like stop crying about it. Let's do something about it. And we see that we can make a change without voting. So let's really, really come out and do a really, really big I voting agree. turnout coming out. Yeah, start locally too. All right, uh, Leaf Light debunks uh, mysteries and myths about crime and teen use. We've talked about this. Yes, and more and more studies are coming about. So where dispensaries are open, people, the, the fear tactic was, I don't want that in my neighborhood. Yeah, you know, my, my, my kids are going to be going there. There's going to be crime. People right. going to be sitting around there shooting each other. Opposite. It, zombie apocalypse did not happen. It does not happen. The world is still turning. <laughs> we're, we're still here. And uh, yeah, actually, property values actually have went up in some areas. Crime has went down, and kids' use has decreased. Oh, it's, it's not cool anymore. It's not. So it's uh, <laughs> so those fear taxes they try to manipulate you with. Yeah, no. Uh, I mean, a quick thing is about uh, CBD nationally. CBDs are popping up in New York. Uh, legal sales in, uh, of marijuana um, fell flat in Vermont. So Vermont was the first state to actually legalize cannabis through legislation. Right, rather than voting, which was cool. Cool. Um, however, they did not legalize any kind of commercial sales. Uh -oh. So they have a gifting clause. But, <laughs> so they have a... Oops. They have a Maybe pretty, you should let voters vote. 
So <laughs> they, they missed the part that people actually are going to sell this. So yeah, <laughs> so they're gifting it. You know, they're doing, they're being creative with it, but people kind of want to regulate it and pay taxes. So it's like a free fall out there right now. So yeah, Vermont. Um, uh, so that's right. So there's a couple more, but um, one big thing is yeah. in Oregon, um, interstate marijuana imports and exports is actually moving up. It went from the House mm-hmm. to the Senate. And they're gonna go back and revise it. It could go to the. That's a very big, that's a very big component. Cause if they open up interstate commerce in that's Oregon, incredible. like they grew like ten times more. Cause they're cannabis, outside. Right. Then the whole population can consume. They do that. They tenex so, it. Yeah. So then other states that are up and coming. They don't have to maybe put so much money into the infrastructure. Right. They can sh- get it shipped from Oregon, which does grow some pretty damn nice. Cannabis. Do you know? I kind of. Okay. <laughs> we won't say if you smoke or not on the show. Yes, yes, this yes. Is live. Well, I, I, well, yes, I consume it, but I, I didn't know tell how I got it. That's all I was going to say. Okay. All right. You've been to Oregon. That's why. Okay. Cool. Yes. That's cool. All right. That's news. We went through that's that. News. That was good. We went through that. That was good. That was cool. There's I'm a couple more articles. Christina's going to post them. Thank you, Christina. You're wonderful. Um, definitely read them. Um, it just keeps you up. There's a lot of stuff going on every day. Always a full day. In the, it is. And it can always industry. find good news. Cool. Main topic. Main topic. We're gonna start with what is concentrate, which we've talked about before. All right. Well, what is concentrate? Because we're talking about what is concentrate. Because the main topic is about tinctures. 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 These little guys. How to make oh, tinctures. Oh, yes. that is. It is on all the way. Yeah, it is. Oh my god, that that's scared okay. me. These I are tinctures. We're gonna, I was gonna spill them. <laughs> we're gonna talk about these tinctures here. Um, and more specifically, we're gonna talk about. Um, alcohol-based tinctures. Yes. So if you can cue that graphic for us, uh, Jared. The concentrates graphic? Yes. Uh, we're saying that because Jared does not watch the graphics before. That's all. He does not care to look <laughs> at the graphics. It is my fault. I didn't tell him. <laughs> so therefore, we have to tell him to cue it. So Jared, you're called out. He's good. He's got it. <laughs> all He's right. So it. all right. So now we're going to, so what is a concentrate, right? Right. You want to answer that one? You can we, answer we, it. I usually read them. Okay. So... We, we gave this definition a couple of times. Pretty much, it is a substance which has the majority of, of its base components removed. Meaning, for example, the apple. Like the apple, you take an apple. Um, if you put it through a juicer, um, you are extracting the juice out of that apple. So you have apple juice in one hand. Then you have like the pulp in the other. So the pulp is more the original form, and then the substance <laughs> uh, that you extracted. I'm just imagine you like apple man squeezing an apple. <laughs> taking an apple like this is pulp. freaking apple. That's what I said. I said juice machine, but I don't need no machine. I just take an apple and I just squeeze it and I drink it. That's what I do. So that's a concentrate. That is a concentrate. <laughs> <laughs> but what leads us to that is tincture. Yes. What's the tincture? Tinctures are made simply by absorbing cannabinoids of other herbal ingredients. We have a tincture slide graphic. Put that up for us. Other uh, ingredients into a high-proof alcohol, usually of a clear. Um, then straining out the plant matter. Tinctures can be consumed by adding a desired amount of food or beverage or simply by dropping a few milliliters under the tongue for more direct as- absorption. Good job. I like that? That was cool? That was good. So, uh, so yeah, we're going to talk about how to make that, but that, that is what a tincture is. Uh, we have a handout for all of our handy slides that Tamara works so hard on. Very good so job, hard. too. Samara Tamara. Um, and you go to our website, CannabisTherapy.network. Jeez. CannabisTherapyNetwork.org slash resources. Then she smiled when she did that, too. So that is a tincture. And so this is nothing new, though. Right. This, this is in the history of cannabis. This, this is like the a... oldest medicine. Yeah. Like doctors in before prohibition, this is what you got over the counter. Like yeah. you had a cold, tincture. Yeah. You have the flu, tincture. tincture. So it's, you got yeah. an STD, tincture. Did, <laughs> did not know. Did not know. Note it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's true. I totally <laughs> okay, know. okay. It was so believable. It was. You just said it right in the middle of the whole conversation. It was just like, okay. Um, and then medical marijuana came back into the picture around 2000, 2018, um, yep. um, and then adult use. So the popularity of tinctures for cannabis um, has come back. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's why it's very important to understand how to make these tinctures because um, you want to be able to do it yourself as well. Because a lot of people are looking and to turn to cannabis now um, to get away from like opioids. Right. Um, or drinking. It's a, it's a gateway out of drugs. Yes. Instead of a gateway in. And there... Yes. That was a very smooth... 
you so much to say that at like a political debate. It, when they say like it's a gateway, it ain't no gateway. It is a gateway. <laughs> say it again. Out. A gateway out. <laughs> I like that. All right. So people go. Um, they're looking for cannabis uh, for therapeutic reasons um, to get to get off of opioids or an alternative to opioids because uh, opioids are more addictive and we're in mm -hmm. a very serious opioid epidemic we are. Um, that people are dying, dying, dying daily. Um, so they're choosing cannabis for to up uplift their mood, for pain relief, um, mm -hmm. choosing it to help sleep. Um, so these tinctures are there and some of the benefits of tinctures, um, I would say, I would say it's just one of my benefits. I feel like it's, it's just effectively easy to use. Very easy to use. And it's very versatile. Like, you can drop it in a drink, you can drop it on your tongue, you can put it in some food. Yeah. STDs. <laughs> <laughs> you should have stuck on that. Just put it on everything. Uh, we have a graphic there, too, Jared, for the benefits of cannabis. They tincture. act quickly, which I think is cool. It's like, uh, you know, normally when you consume it, you have to wait that half an hour, hour. You have to wait forever. But if you consume it just directly under your tongue, you, like... Yeah shoot it, um, you feel the effects almost as if as quickly as you do smoking it. True. So it's, it's, it's quick on that. And it's also, um, it has a very long shelf life. Right. So for those, I mean, cannabis itself can go bad because of light, oxygen, um, heat. Um, so all the elements can actually degrade cannabis. And you can preserve those cannabinoids, those flavonoids, and those terpenes um, in the alcohol base. I mean, almost in, indefinitely, mm -hmm. as long as you keep in a cool, dark spot. So, so those are the benefits. And then... Um, just understanding, I mean, if you are looking for a tincture and you say, okay, great, I'm looking for cannabis, I want to use this, where do you get it from? Right. Um, in Michigan, we talk about caregiver. Mm -hmm. um, in Michigan, we have licensed retail stores for medical use. Um, and the neighborhood guy, who else, who else, where, what else, where do you get it from? Um, uh, you can do it yourself. Home grow, home grow. Grow, if your state has home grow, um, if it doesn't, let me know. I, no, I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> if you stay as home grow, definitely should take advantage of growing. Or there's even just two plants. Right. Um, just to, because you get so much of the extra stuff. You I was going to say use. everything involved yeah. in it. And For it's really not that medicines. hard. Yeah. I mean, you can, it's, I know, I always say that and it sounds terrible, but like you can do this at home. Two plants isn't a big deal. Yeah. It's not hard for someone to, to manage on their own. And, and we're going to try to show and teach you that during yep. our, our growth series because that's, that's very, that's, it's very, it's, it's, it may look a little more intimidating or people make it look like mm -hmm. these big old buildings. You but know, you don't need, you don't need all that. You don't, and you don't need even, even like in Michigan, it's 12 plants. You don't need to do all 12 plants. Yeah, you just have plants just like this. It's not real though. Okay. <laughs> um, so, but understand though, cannabis is complex. So you go in there, you go into a store, say you find her, you meet your caregiver, mm -hmm. you can get overwhelmed. Um, there's a lot of different tinctures, um, a lot of different bases. You have, um, you have an alcohol base, you have a vegetable, vegetable glycerin base, which is non-alcoholic. We'll talk about that more in a second. Um, and then also there's there's different product names. Mm -hmm. um, you can have tinctures that's based upon the plant type, such as is Gorilla Glue tincture, is Nine Pound Hammer tincture. Um, and then you got tinctures that are just isolates. It's just like, just THC. Right. Um, so it's not like the whole plant as, as, as a whole. So um, then you got some people making tinctures, you don't know what the heck's in it. Um, and, and some of them have toxic things in them. Right. Um, so you, you do want to be selective and be educated in what you're getting and have a well-balanced understanding mm -hmm. so you don't go and have negative effects. Right. Right? Cool. But with that said, now we can get into how to actually Yay. make the tinctures. Do you want to uh, say why we use alcohol or did we say that already? Um, let's do that. We have an alcohol graphic there. Um, and so in how we show how to make it, we actually use it with alcohol. And this yes. show is about alcohol. Yes. Um, and the reason is because alcohol is an edible solvent that effectively extracts the majority of the cannabinoids. Mm -hmm. um, and it's still something that we can consume. Right. Um, so unlike if you use butane, I mean, you can't, you can't leave it in butane. And, no. You know, or CO2 or anything like that. Um, so alcohol is a way that it can absorb. So the higher the proof, the better. Um, and we're going to get into some different tips in, the, in, the, in our next clip. Um, but that's why alcohol is used. Cool. Let's go ahead and I will throw it back to our past selves and uh, in the lab. Yes. Future Jen, we are here to show you how to make infused alcohol, a.k.a. Green Dragon. Green Dragon. <sighs> yeah. You know Game okay. of Thrones? <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen that. I haven't either. 
No? I just okay. know that like there's dragons in it. Yeah, and I hear a lot of people talk about it. Right. Series. Yeah. Maybe we'll just YouTube the synopsis. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but we are here to talk about a different kind of dragon. Yes, green dragon, which is um, infused alcohol. Um, we're going to talk about how to make it and uh, step by step. Want to get to it? Yep. Yep. So let's start off with what you need. All right. So some things that we need would be the material. Here is the flower trim, AKA hand trim. Mm -hmm. um, I like to use hand trim. A lot of the leaves, the fan leaves, a lot of those can get thrown into trash along with the sticks and stems. Um, however, when you trim the bud, uh, the, the fan leaves or the leaves that fall off of that, I save that for edibles. Okay. Um, so that way you get a really nice, posting, consistent um, edible, and you can separate it by each, each, each kind as well. So if you're doing Kim Dog, you can separate Kim Dog um, alcohol to blueberry haze okay. alcohol to purple haze alcohol. And then you can drink each one and kind of see how they affect you therapeutically different. Okay. Um, so some can like make that. you sleepy, some can make you calm, um, some can make you more energetic, um, and some could help more with pain. So all those things matter. So you want to do small batches and keep them separate. Uh, but hand trim is what I would recommend. Or if you can afford the buds, um, buds is good. Mm -hmm. uh, but other than that, um, you don't really want to use anything other than that. Yeah, yeah, you want to stick with that. Okay, cool. Um, some of the things that we will need um, is a grinder. Um, we, I use a ninja grinder. Uh, you can use a coffee grinder. Uh, you can use a handheld yeah. grinder. Um, you can even use your hands. Yeah, you like just to. pick it apart. Yeah, but if you're going to be consistently making this for uh, you the, get a grinder. reasons, yeah, you probably want a grinder. So we use a ninja. Um, another thing we're going to need is a saucepan. Um, nice deep dish. Yep. Um, so this is a saucepan, and this also has to be oven friendly. Yes, it has to. Everything has to be able to go into the oven. This saucepan you use. Yeah. So stainless steel for a considerable amount of time. Yes, uh, four to eight hours, and. Uh, yeah, and I think you can't go wrong with stainless steel. Right, I mean, yeah. it'll last forever. Yeah. Um, and then a measuring cup. Uh, you want a measuring cup so you can measure how much of the base, how much alcohol you're gonna actually gonna add to it. Um, and other than that, I think that those, oh, mason jars. Mason jars. Uh, we need mason jars uh, so we can store it. Alcohol. And then the actual alcohol. So talk about the alcohol for a second. Um, the highest percentage that we can get in Michigan is about 151. Right. Uh, so it, it comes in, there's Everclear 151, there's Bacardi, I believe, yeah. 151. So you want to get the highest alcohol percentage that you can. Um, I believe in like Tennessee though, or, or down south, you can get like 190 proof. Yeah, in Indiana you can. Indiana? Yes. Yeah, okay. So if you're in Michigan, Indiana's not that far. Yeah. It's like the only reason to go to Indiana. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not a Hoosier <laughs> fan. I'm not a Pacers fan. I'm well, Detroit I grew Lions, up in Illinois, but I get it. 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 Larry Bird. I don't know. It's okay. That's basketball. I know. All right. So, so yeah. But uh, but you also. I mean, if it's not the highest percentage, it's okay. It's um, okay. I mean, this works perfectly fine. Right. You're and, good. And and even um, lower, such as if you want to make an infused Hennessy, mm -hmm. um, or if you want to make an infused with your favorite vodka. I like Belvedere. Yeah. Um, infused Belvedere. Yep. Um, gin. Yep. Gin and juice. Infuse gin and juice. I'm, I want to do it. I'm, I, yeah. Now that I learned that I can, yeah. like I'm going to. And then you can use that to make any kind of favorite cocktail that you like. So for right now, we got Everclear because it's the highest potency. And the higher the potency of liquor, the more of the, ca uh, of the cannabinoids, of the terpenes, and of the flavonoids you're going to absorb mm -hmm. into that alcohol and that's why people like to go so high is they like to pull out more yeah but if you're doing it for just like taste and stuff you can, yeah. you can go less yeah you make your own favorite your favorite cocktail and try so. different kinds let's get into that yeah let's get into let's that. actually the step by steps on how to do it so um first step is you're gonna need an oven yep okay um and you would want to collaborate that oven and a couple ways you can collaborate that oven um is you can get a digital thermometer um, where you can has a little red dot that mm -hmm. beam on there where you can set your oven at a certain temperature which we recommend to deep carb which is 250 degrees so you set it at 250 you got your digital thermometer you, you shoot it in there and it says it's at 230 mm -hmm. so that means your oven is actually um, 20 degrees short so you want it at 250 but it's at 230 and it does matter as far as degrees right. when it comes to decarbing 
So you want to set your oven now at 270 mm -hmm. to actually get it real fill at 250. Yep. So that if you, um, and it's optional. You, it's optional. Like if you cook well and you know your oven works fine for you, you're, yeah. you're probably okay. But if you ever notice, you're like, oh, this is a little off or I thought it should be cooked by now. Just check your oven out. Get a little, what a collaborator. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If, it's, if, if, if your direction says it should be done in 10 minutes and you're like, man, I'm usually That's cooking three for three hours. It's <laughs> <laughs> probably you need to collaborate that oven. Um, so yes, yeah, so because it does matter with this because mm -hmm. you want to activate the TAC, right. um, the CBD, CBN. You want to activate all of that yes. as well. Okay. Um, and the next thing is going to be is to actually decarb it. Um, now you could decarb it before you grind it. Okay. Um, or you can grind it and then decarb it. That's usually what I do. Okay, grind it. Yeah, and okay. then I, that way it's all like in there already for me. Cool. So let's do that now. So we're going to actually grind it. So I took this ounce. This is nine pound hammer. You can see some buds in there, um, just a little bit. There's some uh, good hand shrimp in there. And a few sticks, but it's okay because the alcohol is going to absorb what we want, and we're going to strain out the things that we do not want. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to got out of the ninja. I got to do my little tilt. Sorry, do my little tilt. And the reason why I tilt because if you do this, I mean stuff just flies. It just flies. But yeah, and we already got this on, so we're not taking it off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna put our little safety cap on here, so we're not blending any. Uh, fingers off here powers on now when I say blend what I really mean is we're just gonna pulse it okay and we're gonna pulse it up to maybe ten times but you're kind of looking at it to where you want to make sure it's kind of fine not like a powder fine right. but you also trying to save space because you, you're gonna use a cup of what we recommend is using at, at the bare minimum a quarter of an ounce, right? Which is seven grams per cup mm -hmm. of the base, whether it was alcohol or oil. Um, seven to one, mm -hmm. seven grams to one. Um, also, you can do a half ounce, which is a half half ounce to one. Um, and then my favorite is one to one. That's what yeah, that's what I like. That's what we usually see people online doing is yeah. one cup of base to one ounce of right. product. And so part of the reason why we're also blending this is that we want to make sure that that one cup of alcohol covers right. and smothers the entire ounce of cannabis. So um, that does that, and that's it. I mean, we did that less than 10 times. And then I'm going to pour this into, now with Ninja, this thing comes off, so let's pour that on. I'm just going to put that there. Put that there. Scoop this back. And as you can see here, this is uh, it's a little bit more finer. Yep. It's gonna give us plenty of room to add the alcohol. Okay. You can smell it. it. Smells good. Yeah. Yeah. So that's nine pound hammer. So we're gonna make a very fruity. nine pound hammer alcohol, aka Green Dragon. And you're gonna see why it's called Green Dragon in a second too. So this is one cup of. Alcohol shot for you? No, thank you. Okay, she said no. She's not about it. <laughs> not of Everclear. I've never took a shot of don't Everclear. Don't ever take a shot of Everclear. I don't think I can swallow it. Like I feel like. Okay. Uh, if you don't immediately <laughs> spit it out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it could be very hard to take. Oh. And I definitely don't recommend trying to take a shot and letting your drunk friend light it on fire before you take the shot because that's how you burn one of John's favorite shag carpets oh, at the fraternity. Okay. Jenna has stories. <laughs> she has stories. But I never drank the Everclear, just straight up. Okay, cool. Um, so what, what I just did was I just added. Um, Jen does drink Everclear. It's okay. No, I we don't. we accept Jen the way she is. It's okay. Um, no shame, no judgment. <laughs> <laughs> but we're gonna make this Green Dragon flavorful, so where it has medicinal and therapeutic benefits. Yes. And what I'm doing right now is I'm just mixing this around up in here. And as you can see, that ounce of liquor was just, or that cup of liquor. <laughs> ounce of material. Just, yeah, the ounce of material and a cup of liquor was just enough to where it covers. So that's key. You want it to cover because you want the alcohol to get all those cannabinoids, yes. all those terpenes, and all those flavonoids out of there. Okay? Um, now, what I would have done before we mix this, though, is that I would have just took this pan mm -hmm. along with the blended um, ounce and I would have put it in the oven for 
30 minutes at 250 degrees, separate from the alcohol. Right. And then I would have took it out, um, and then I would add the alcohol and then mix it like we did. So step two is to decarb by itself, and then step three is to combine the decarb flour and the alcohol, okay? Okay. So that was step three. I just wanted to clarify that. Um, now after that's done, um, step four, final stage is actually, so you decarbed it for 30 minutes, um, you combine them, and then now you want to turn your oven down to 160 degrees. Yep. Um, and then you want to set this in your oven um, at about four to eight hours. Um, if you don't have an oven or if you're not using an oven, you can also use a slow cooker. Okay. And Like a crock pot. Yeah, a crock pot. And um, you can set that at low or warm. And again, this is an, another key moment to have that digital thermometer where you can mm -hmm. see the temperature of the actual crock pot because you want to keep it around 160. So I've seen also people make it with like rice cookers. Yeah, you can't, uh, with, with rice cookers, you are going to be decarbon it at the same time. Oh, okay. Because okay. those get up to above 200. Okay, so if you're rice cooking it, don't decarb first? Yeah. Okay. Because and, and it also is going to take, if you're rice cooking, if I put that amount into a rice cooker, um, it's going to take a little bit longer. Okay. Um, and that's actually how a lot of people make RSO. Um, right. Rick Simpson oil. Okay. So you also use the same technique, you're using the liquor um, for Green Dragon. Oh, is the okay. same technique you're also using to make RSO. Okay. Um, which for a different show, we actually we specialize that, yeah. in just RSO because um, you don't necessarily have to use um, 151. But um, so, yeah, so you had a rice cooker, um, slow cooker, or oven. I prefer oven. Um, but if you have a slow cooker, you can use the tools that's around you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you want to set that in there for about four to eight hours. Um, and you want to be consistent in knowing how long you set that in there. Yes. Because the, not, not only does degrees matter, um, but also temperatures and time matter. Mm -hmm. um, so if you put it in there for about four hours, you can get a different effect. Say you put it in for four hours and you take in the green dragon tincture, um, it could give you, say, an uplifting effect. Right. But if you put it in there for eight hours, taking the same amount, the same dose of green dragon From tincture, the same batch, same batch um, it could be more in bliss. It could be a little bit more psychoactive. Um, you know, you could be really seeing dragons. <laughs> you, who knows? So, so you definitely want to be consistent um, because we're all about consuming um, and making cannabis and cannabis products for a therapeutic point of right. view. Um, so if you're using it for pain relief. You're using it for some kind of intention, um, some kind of goal, some kind of mood or effect mm -hmm. um, that you're trying to bring back the balance. So if you're trying to do that, you want to keep your batches separate. So if you're using a chem yes. dog, Using a blueberry haze, what's your favorite kind? My favorite kind? Oh my gosh. Uh, I really like Gorilla Glue. Gorilla Glue? Uh, a flower. Oh yeah? Okay, flower. cool. I have a different... So you could take your favorite flower, and if you want it to last longer, or use it in different methods, that's how you can buy that ounce of flour, um, and then cook with it. Okay. So you can use buds or trim. And then you have your favorite um, Gorilla Glue tincture, Gorilla Glue oil, all that jazz. Okay? Nice. All right. So once this is good. So this is in the oven, and I will say it is alcohol. Um, so just make sure that you have like a fan on in yeah. your kitchen um, yeah. if you're like cooking at home. We're at a pretty open spot here, so it's yeah. not that big of a deal. But if you got a small kitchen, just have a fan, open up the window a little bit. You're gonna want a good airflow because it is alcohol that you're burning. And it's very key to keep that temperature low. Yes, don't get it too um, high. Make sure that's well, why you want the collab. Yeah, and that's kind of what you want it at 160, um, especially if you're using a saucepan on top mm -hmm. um, of a burner. I would definitely recommend electric burners. Yes. And do not use gas. Don't use any open flame of yeah. any kind. Yeah. yeah. And and don't be like smoking around it either. Like you know, I like to smoke and cook, but if you since you have the alcohol that's that's heating up, yeah. don't have don't light your lighter or anything. You want to be really safe with this. And this has been decarved, and this has been in the oven for eight hours. And as you can see, um, this whole jar was well, about here at first with alcohol. Okay. But in the oven is gonna evaporate a little bit. Right. Okay. Um, and you can also add more alcohol if you want to, to make it the yield. So the reason why I use this strainer first is it's not as fine as a cheesecloth. And I just wanna get most of this stuff just through. So here we go. So as you can see, that's green. That is very green. Once we get in another mason jar. Woo! Look at that. Look at that right there. Chonky. Now, as it was in the oven, as you can see, this, it looks a little bit more 
um, chunky. And the reason why it looks chunky is because while I was in the oven, every little bit I kept stirring it. Yes. So I kept stirring it and it breaks it up a little bit and it gets a little bit more finer too, mm -hmm. okay? I want to get all that potency, all those chemical compounds out of the plant, extract it to let it go into the alcohol. So it's kind of going from a bus, jumping to the boat. Huh? Okay. Huh? I like that. Uh, huh? Huh? Different vehicle. All right. So once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and I know we're straining just a little bit. I got another backup pan back here. I'm just gonna set it back here. I'll let that go there. And then the next thing we're gonna do is actually use our cheesecloth. Now we're using this tip here. Um, last episode we actually used a grape press. Yep. Okay. Um, and that's good for saving on labor. Uh, but not everybody has a grape press. Right. Do you have a grape press at home? I do not have you a grape press. You don't press grapes? I don't. Okay. Well, we're going to take the mason jar. We're going to take the ring. Uh, take the center out. Okay. And we're just going to put that ring. Actually, I'm going to This is your down. tip for Thursday. Yeah. I'm just going to put it in there. So That's now that cheese clump. Yeah. So let me just like push my finger in it. And then here, go ahead and do that. I'm just going to... Here go. <laughs> Thank you, Jen. Thank you. This is what I do. At home. This is how I do it. So uh, I'm very particular. It has to be just right. Now I'm going to take that and I'm just going to strain it through again. And this is just so it tastes like really good. We want to we want to get all those little bits out because if you put this in a drink, like you don't want like floaters. Yeah. Now, as you, we're going to not do all the material, but say you know we do have some of those chunks in there. Now at this point, you're just gonna repeat this process over and over. And now you can just squeeze that out. Yeah, as you can see, I was trying to show you on camera without having to like go anywhere, <laughs> but it's not good. So basically I'm just squeezing it out. Now you also do not have to squeeze. If you um, don't, the more you squeeze, the more chlorophyll mm -hmm. is gonna come out of the flour or the bud that you use to make it with. Um, so if you don't like that taste, um, then definitely you don't have to squeeze. I, for, for one, I squeeze for potency. So I was going to say, I'll, I'll forego taste for potency. Yeah. I mean. Because the chances are you're going to take this and uh, we'll give tips and semi pro tips on what you can do with the liquor. Right. Um, but you're going to take this and then add it to something else that's a little bit more flavor. And you're not really going to taste it. Like when I make mine at home, I never really taste it in my drinks. Cool. Um, now, after that, uh, we have the mason jar, because after you put it in there, um, we're, we're pretty much good to, to store it. Mm -hmm. um, the shelf life on this, even if you did not refrigerate this, I mean, it's six to eight months. Oh, wow. Um, if you did freeze it or refrigerate it, you know, it can last more than a year. Um, and I mean, it's, it's alcohol. Like, think about how long alcohol at home lasts for, you know? Yeah, 100%, 100%. And then this is, a, this is a green drink. And the reason why they call it green. Yeah, so I was gonna say, we gotta show the green color. I know it looks so dark, but it actually is green if you look at the bubbles. <laughs> like, yeah, that's uh, no. <laughs> so and that's Do how you make, <laughs> and that's how you make uh, green dragon, and we'll bring it back to or take it back to future Earl, future Jen. Yes. And then um, we'll go over some tips on what to do with green dragon. Right. Cool. Back to you guys. Thanks, Pastor ah! Jen. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to do that. <laughs> yeah, this is random. This is random. We're back. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> We're back. We are back. I hope you enjoy our episode in the lab. Um, we're going to move to semi-pro tips in one second. Um, first, you can actually get the recipe. Um, we know the graphics may have been kind of hard to read on yeah. that. Uh, we, did re we did correct that after. Uh, we were yelled at about the graphics being hard to read. Um, however, you can actually get the recipe on our website, yep. cannabistherapynetwork.org backslash resources. And we got a whole handout for how to make uh, tinctures, yep. a.k.a. Green Dragon. And you'll see all of the slides that we show up on the episode, so don't feel like you got to like screenshot them or anything. We, they're all up there. If you screenshot it, that'd be cool. It means like, you really like, like us. You're like really like, into it, and, and we something. appreciate you. Uh, I love that. All right, cool. All right, semi pro tips. Yay. Tips for using tinctures. Um, my personal tip, like I always tell people you can put it under the tongue, but like I never put it under my tongue. No. What do you do? 
I just put it in drinks. Ah. I just always like drop it in. Like I'll make a gin and ah, tonic, and I'll I'll drop it in, and okay. I'll drink that. I feel that. I feel that. Um, I like. Well, one was whole plant. Um, that tip. If you're gonna purchase yep. a tincture, keyword whole plant. Um, you want to make sure it's has the whole complete picture and not one individual or a couple individual parts, uh, because the sum of its parts are not greater than the whole. Did I, I say like that? that. Uh, 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 uh. That's good. Um, if you could um, find, if you are buying it from people um, outside of yourself from making it, um, when check if it's lab tested. Understand that's not everywhere, um, but at least some kind of label. Um, or some just something that's all in it. Yeah. Um, you just don't want to take any mystery tincture. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't recommend that. No. So that's definitely a pro tip. Um, and then with the alcohol, we got to be careful that sometimes it actually could sting. Yeah. Yeah. I've read that online that people are like, "How do I get it not to burn?" Yeah. So um, that's where we're going to do another one with a non-alcohol base, and that's with the vegetable glycerin. And that it doesn't have that much that kick, right? Cause um, and I, mean, I never drunk like one fifty one like pure, but when you put that underneath your tongue, it's just like I don't know how anyone takes. I don't a know shot how that takes that. that. Stuff. No, that's pretty. Cause cool. this is pretty like cooked down too, so it's not as yeah. alcoholic. Like it still has alcohol in it. And then uh, we're actually going to show you how to make a cocktail in a second. Um, but a couple more tips I would say as uh, Jen's getting ready for this master bartender over here is about to do some things. Um, so with the tincture, it normally takes. 15 to 30 minutes to start feeling something. Right. Um, smoking could take 15 seconds uh, to 20 minutes. Then it's tincture, which is sublingually taking it. Um, and then there's ingestibles, mm -hmm. um, something that you eat. Um, and that usually could be like an hour. Um, I think Jared tooted. I know, I got vibrated and I was like, I don't know like, if that's that? my what's phone. That? Going on? And, um, and also be mindful if you're taking it and you're in a situation, the uh, effects will last 45 minutes to three hours. Okay. Um, so depending on what you have to do, um, you got to pick kids up or something like that, you want to plan that out. Um, of course, an uh, edible or an ingestible could last up to eight hours. Right. Or even 16 hours, depending on how much you take. Wow. Um, and then also, well, one thing with the tinctures is that it can stain you. Um, so, because it's kind of green, you know. So this is what we oh. made in the lab. So, a little close up. I was like, I, I thought you meant like stain your mouth or your like <laughs> internals. And I'm like, how do you know that? Because you can actually use tinctures as a topical. So alcohol absorbs into the skin. So right. So if, if, I mean, just like if you had a cut, and um, I know some people may or may not recommend to put cannabis on an open wound, um, but there's plenty of cuts that I've had instead of Nero Sporn. Um, oh. I actually take a uh, alcohol tincture, suck it up, and go, ah! I'm going like, to say it probably burns yeah, yeah, a little okay. bit. But even after that, as it's healing, um, your scab and all that stuff, you can still apply that. Okay. And the cannabinoids and the cannabis plant does its wonders. So that's what it means by staining the skin. So it's not something that's gonna, you know, you're trying to put on your face. It's, it's, you're probably gonna well, unless you want to be green. Yeah, yeah, hawk. Hulk um, <laughs> and then for THC, uh, uh, recommended dosage, I would say between two to ten milligrams. Okay. Per dose, and usually you'll get um, this right here is typically about um, one mil right now, which is about one gram. Okay. Okay. So that's about one gram. And one gram typically could have um, 10 milligrams of THC. Okay. Um, and that's where it kind of, if you're tested your product, then you will know what the right. milligram, but if you don't, it's going to be anecdotal. Okay. So start, start, start low. All right. So you just start with just half that amount. Okay. Take that, wait about a half hour, um, and then see how they made you feel. Okay. So then measure your dosing from there. So then next time, you know, you go a little bit more, um, and then when you syringe it, you put it back in there, and uh, sometimes you end up doing two syringes. So, um, yeah. So, and this is how you would take it sublingually. Actually, I'm going to take the CBD. The CBD, one. yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, he took some before the show, so. Yeah. And he's about to I'm gonna drink do a, a shot here. So this is a CBD tincture. A little clear. Uh, this Watermelon is actually flavored. Isolate itself, and you just put it underneath your tongue. I put it on my tongue like that, and I just sit And then there. you're supposed to let it sit there for a little bit let before you there. swallow it so it can absorb into your bloodstream. I'm going to let it sit here and start making a drink. How about that? Bring out the cute cups. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is this is not a sturdy table. Okay, cool. <laughs> so we're about to show you how to make a uh, cocktail, a alcohol, alcohol, 
uh, cocktail, we're going to use tonic. Um, bring gin? No, I forgot it. So we're going to have a it's mocktail. A tincture, it's a tincture and tonic. It's, it's a tincture okay. and tonic. Okay. All right, so we're going to we're going to take that. So imagine that. Look how cute the cups are. You imagine need to first that. appreciate the cuteness of these cups. Yes. So this is how I typically, actually, if you hand me your Arizona. So this is how I typically make. Um, I have my mixer, and then pretend this is our gin, um, which actually... Smells like Jen's been drinking gin. <laughs> she puts it in the Arizona. I was wondering why you always have these cans. This is like not see through. You know my secret. There. That's okay. That's cool. Okay. Um, all right, cool. I didn't know where I was putting that. All right, so then I would typically, if I have my alcohol, you know, I'm mixing it just like that. Now. Did you know that it was going to fit if you poured the whole thing in? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a very good point. I was like, wow, glad I didn't I was like, it. That's perfect. So now a couple of things. Now you can take your tincture now and you can just apply it in there. I'm going to show some pictures. So you can see kind of how it looks. Try to get a little close. Is that good, Jared? Cool. So it get a little bit more greener in there. Oh, it is. Yeah. Okay. Now, typically, I don't know, you could take your shot just like that, but you can mix it some more. All right. He wants you to make sure we get a fair yeah, even yeah, dose yeah, is yeah, what yeah, he's yeah. doing. You know, getting the air bubbles. Look at that. Look at that. I'm going to stretch myself. Oh, shoot. Look at that. Look at it on TV. Like, jig, 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 jig. It's a little <laughs> All right. So I'm going to split this in half now. Uh, it's kind of half. More you. All right. Cool. Yeah. There we go. All right. And then, uh, cheers. Are you going to? Toast? What? <laughs> I'm going to if you're going to shoot it all or if you're going to drink it slow. No, I, I'm a, if you finish it, I'm going to finish it. Oh, okay. All right, let's go. All right, we're good. Look at that. No? Good? What do you think? There's definitely um, weed in that. <laughs> <laughs> See, Jen doesn't really like the taste of weed. I and, really and, don't. And now, as a person who does not like the taste of weed, how... On a scale of one to five, five minutes, oh, so easy. I could drink that anytime. One to me, I'm never drinking that again. Where was that on you? It was like a four. I oh, will yeah. say if it was probably without the, uh, without this tonic, okay. I think it probably would have been worse. If okay. Because this isn't as flavored. But uh, it actually really wasn't bad. Yeah. And you can mix this, I mean, again, so whatever your favorite cocktail is, if, say you got Hennessy on the rocks, um, uh, you can use this. And actually, um, if you're looking to cut back on drinking as much as well, so you can actually put tincture in that cocktail or in a beer, Mm -hmm. uh, talk about a high life. <laughs> no, high life beer. We get it. High life. Beer. It's so bad. <laughs> okay. It's so good. All right. So that's how you know. You know. You can. Now I know in Michigan they they actually passed a legislation that you can't sell right. any alcohol infused um, cannabis, cannabis infused yeah, alcohol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cannabis infused alcohol products. So. Uh, but you can make it yourself. I know, you know, the reefer madness. Oh my God, alcohol and cannabis. You're going to be coming around here eating people. I have not eaten gin at all. <laughs> <laughs> I am okay. <laughs> you are still there. Uh, Jared's hair is still real. Uh, <laughs> everything's all good. So, no, I mean, um, I like, uh, even with, if it's with wine, you know, if you'd like to drink a glass of wine at night to right. actually relax, you can have your tincture. You can dose it in there. And now you kind of mix in a... Uh, you know, your wine and your uh, your cannabis together. And then you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> your weed wine makes you fine. See, but I like crossfading. Like, if I'm drinking, I'm smoking. But I don't necessarily have to, like, drink when I smoke. But yeah. if I'm drinking, yeah. I'm smoking. Because I guess I'm always smoking. Yeah, I like I like it too because it's, it helps me cut back from right. drinking as much as I would be. And then when I drink too much, the next morning, I yeah. have my yeah, you feel it, cannabis like, there yeah. for me. Yeah. And I mean, I'm, and we're both pretty healthy people here, and it's not like again we're just deteriorated. And I know we're trying. If you're 21 and older, is it for you? Is it not for anyone who's 21 or, or younger? But if you're of the drinking age and of the consuming age of cannabis, it's for you. Alcohol and cannabis, um, to me, has been a phenomenal success um, to help me chill out at night. Yeah, that's what I do. Nice to sleep with too. But yeah, she like, sleeps with the bottle. <laughs> Just curls up next to it. When I get up in the morning, I'm gonna drink some more. <laughs> <laughs> All right, questions and answers. Questions yes. and answers. Questions and answers.
earlier, we did not have any questions, so hopefully we have some now. Hopefully you liked our show on Instagram. Hopefully you was able to catch it. Um, you can watch the show if you did not get to see the recording, or if you miss any of our show, or any of our shows, period, which you should never miss a show, ever. You should never. But if you so happen, because an emergency, you had to miss a show, you can go to our website, CannabisTherapyNetwork.org, uh, and you can see all the past shows there. Uh, 1E has a YouTube channel. You can check it out there. And, of course, G3, Cannabis Therapy Network, has a YouTube channel. You can see all of our past episodes there. And g give us all your feedback, honestly. Give us your feedback. We're always trying to improve. We're always trying to um, optimize things and make sure that you're getting value from this. So if you want us to stop talking, tell us that, too. We probably can still keep doing this. But uh, uh, give us your feedback. So, again. Well, that's about as much of a rant I went on to see if we had any questions and answers. So far, no. Okay, cool. We're just doing such a good job, you know, like explaining it to people. There's no need. Cool. I'm almost there, though. Pretty good. Well, I think some key takeaways, um, as she keeps looking, um, and she can We're join good. in. Uh, some of the key token takeaways, I think, would be um, tinctures are very useful. It's nothing right. new underneath the sun. And sometimes you just gotta go back to a classic. They, they were on to something. They were. Thousands of years ago with tinctures. If you're feeling a little and sick, a, you can take a little tincture. Yeah. And, and they actually, better. and they used to, yeah, I'm not gonna. They probably didn't have as high quality as we do now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they, they actually used to actually promote this for like, when children had like colds yes. and stuff. Yes, Yeah, like that was the tincture, that was the way. Even like Charlotte's Web um, on CNN and the, 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 the young lady who had, um, Caesars, mm -hmm. and they gave her some CBD, and it actually wasn't C, it was THC tincture. Right. Uh, she was taking that, and it helped her with it. But that's helpful because sometimes you don't want to smoke. Exactly. Um, or just you don't smoke. Or you don't smoke exactly. This is a very quick and efficient way to uh, get your daily dose of cannabis. Cool. Yeah. Well, with that's that said, that's our show. That's how you make tinctures with alcohol. That is how it is. Uh, please share us. On Facebook, share us on Instagram, share us on YouTube, subscribe to us on YouTube, do all of that. All of it. All of it. And then send us questions. And if you do that, we're going to give you a reward. Ooh. And if you do it, I will think of the reward because now I have to actually give up a reward. <laughs> so until you do it, I'm just right. going to keep that idle. All right? Okay. Cool. I all like right. it. Uh, thank you. Uh, yes, thank you. So thank you, Jared, for directing us um, and dealing with us. <laughs> uh, thank you, Terry. God, I love doing that. <laughs> People he thought I gave you a mean look when I did that last time. I was just saying. I, that's just, just how we do it. Yeah, that's how you do it. But he thought that, like I was mad at him or something. Sorry, like, Terry. No, Terry, it's just intentionally. That's, that's what... <laughs> thank you, Leo. Uh, he's over in the... Um, Myrtle Beach or somewhere. Oh. Myrtle, yeah, Myrtle Beach. You know, he's uh, showing off his, his chest muscles. Uh, he's probably the only black man with a zebra speedo uh, out there in Myrtle Beach. So if you see a black guy, big built, with a zebra speedo, uh, that's Leo. Uh, Go smack hump. his ass. Yeah, yeah smack his <laughs> ass. Brian, hopefully at the shop, checking us out. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, everybody who's part of the team, thank you. Thank you, Tamra. Samra, Tamra. Samra, Tamra. Always reliable, always there. Um, and always cool. And then thank you, Christina, and thank you, Mike. And we will see you guys next week with yes. another fun topic. Same time. Peace out. Bye.